When thinking of Will Chamberlain, there's two numbers that come to mind. A hundred and twenty thousand. His name overwhelms the pro basketball history book and the body count record book. He's somewhat mythical. But what if I told you Wilt's biggest accomplishment was something he didn't even tell the public. Something that's still unknown by most people. Something that was discovered in 2013 but still kept under the radar for some reason. Well in this episode, we'll take a look at Wilt's incredible pre-NBA career and post-NBA career. By now, there's so many stories about Will Chamberlain that it's difficult to really um, tell what's real and what's not. And let's just say it, man, this guy never lacked self-confidence. He was always known to either lie or embellish stories. I honestly think that if I played right now versus my time, I'd have a 70, 70 points a game. I'm getting 50 inches off of the ground on a vertical. Now, this puts me so far above people. I watch a cream out there now. I think the center position has suffered. I think they have lousy singers right now. They're two or three who are any good. The rest of them couldn't make Overbrook High School. Mm -hmm. now, sex is very important. It's helped to keep me alive and well and still have many dreams in that, in that fashion. There is a lot of myth and legend. How mm -hmm. much of that is true? One, well, are, are you 100% of But there's something you can't refute, and that's actual evidence. There's that one time that he lied for another purpose than embellishing his story. There's one time he omitted to tell people something he did and something inconceivable even for Wilt. What if I told you Wilt played professional basketball before he even got to college? What? That he would basically torch his high school peers, switch uniforms, and go dominate grown men. Well, what would you tell me? Well, how is that even possible, man? He would have lost his eligibility to play in college. And it's the truth, man. Even in the 50s, that's how it was. But how do you get around that? Well, you create a fake identity. From now on, you're not Will Chamberlain, you're George Marcus. And turns out George Marcus played two professional seasons before even entering college. In 2013, there's a guy named Carl Robb, the mayor of a small town in Pennsylvania. And he heard a rumor basically stating that a young Will Chamberlain might have played illegally in a pro basketball league all across Pennsylvania. So what he did is he actually went to the community center of that small town having heard that that's where they used to play. He showed up there, didn't find any evidence. That's 60, 70 years ago, man. But what happened is, there's a guy that heard about his quest. He came to him, got in contact with him, and said, hey, I have local newspapers, I have stat sheets, and I have pictures. All proofs. The guy's name was Jim Roche. He's now in his 80s, and he was the actual scorekeeper for that team Will Chamberlain played for. So. George Marcus played two professional seasons before even entering college. One for the Pittsburgh Raiders and one for the Quakertown Fays. At 16 years old in his first season, he led the Pittsburgh Raiders to a 36-1 record. But the real madness starts in the second season. At 17 years old, a young Will Chamberlain won league MVP by averaging 53 points a game at 17 against grown ass men. Now, 53 is great, but this guy took it up another notch in the playoffs. According to stat sheets, he averaged 74 points per game. What? 7 4. I don't even know what. What the is. fuck? It seems ridiculous. I mean, everything was ridiculous with Wilt, but there's also something that aged terribly wrong. There was a local newspaper that made a story about it calling him a seven-foot giant n-word. Proof right there. When Wilt was asked the question later on when he was in college, he denied the whole thing. And you can probably imagine how it went down like, hey Wilt, uh, is it possible that could be you on this picture right there that's uh, playing professional basketball? Wilt answering, nah man, look at this, this guy's named George Marcus, it makes no sense. I'm guessing the AAU investigators did not go further along and were probably like, hey, bet, I guess you're right, didn't think of that. And that, guys, is how the legend of Will Chamberlain started. But how did it end? You could say it ended in 99 when he passed away, 
but I'm talking about his actual basketball career. Well, it ended as a head coach. There was only one team that could make him a head coach. The San Diego Conquistadors, the year after he retired from the NBA. And there's only one reason this guy would coach that team. The Dallas sign. He was offered $600,000 to actually play center for that team. When he showed up to camp, he actually played four exhibition games, averaging 20 points per game. The problem was, at, right after that, the Los Angeles Lakers uh, took Wilt and the San Diego Conquistadors to court because they were still uh, owning the rights to Wilt. Wilt was still under contractual obligations for the Lakers, so he had to stop playing. But the contract was already signed, so we, uh, and you could probably believe the Conquistadors wanted to keep Wilt because they were like, whatever you are on our team, if it's a coach, whatever it is, you're going to draw a crowd, man. And that's what happened. They signed him to be a coach, and he had power over uh, roster decisions. So everything was great until Wilt just decided not to show up to games and to practice. Well, it turns out Wilt never moved to San Diego. This whole time he was still living in Bel Air out here in Los Angeles. When he would show up to games or practices, According to Jeannie Moore, who was the actual starting center for that team, he would show up with celebrities, with women. Jeannie Moore once said that he heard Will Chamberlain on the sideline speaking to a woman, and the woman was asking him, hey, what's your astrological uh, sign? Will basically answered, the dollar sign, baby. And again, you can probably believe that as well. When Will Chamberlain heard that, Jeannie Moore actually spoke to the media telling them this story. Wilt called Jeannie Moore a fat pig and cut him from the roster. If you know Wilt, I don't know him personally, but I've heard a lot of stories about it, reading books. There's that time Kareem said that he was in the elevator with Wilt and there's a guy that came in. Uh, the guy basically asked, how's the weather up there? Because they were tall as shit. And Wilt answered by saying, it's raining. <laughs> basically spinning on the dude, man. The problem with Wilt in this situation was not that he did not have the IQ to be a coach. He had a great basketball mind. He signed to be a player, was turned into a coach, and did not take it seriously. That's just how it was. So now you know the beginning and the end of Wilt's professional basketball career. That leaves us a lot to talk about in future episodes when it comes to his actual career. Now thank you for listening. That was the first episode of Basketball Mega Show slash podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. There's a lot more to talk about. See you next time. Remember the name, Wilt Chamberlain. It'll probably make big sports copy for years to come.